Hello and welcome to episode 007. In this episode, I will be covering the creation of a low-cost DIY built tool for unwrapping wire wrap connections that are made on some electronic equipment termination points. This tool can be constructed quickly from items that are readily available, either from online mail order sourcing or might also be available at a hardware or hobby supply store. This tool, once constructed, will aid in the removal and reuse of wire wrap connected leads by removing them from the wire wrap pin with as little of a disturbance as possible. This tool will work on most, but possibly not all sized wire wrap connections, but can be scaled for other size and gauge wires and pins. I hope you enjoy the video and the information. Hello and welcome to this episode of Poor Man's Electronics Bench. In this episode I'm going to go over the dilemma of how to handle wire wrap connections on a piece of electronics equipment. Now people, as far as technicians, if you're not used to seeing wire wrap connections, they're usually will utter a long string of expletives, don't want to deal with them, and just wish they were never created. But fact being said is in some industries like telecommunications it is a standard connection that is actually replaced solder joints for connections on telecommunications mainframes and the copper telecommunications cable connections in between equipment and the outside plant and also just a whole slew of other equipment it's they're very good connections if done properly the connections are clean if the proper wire is used. I've seen hundred, literally hundreds of thousands of these connections I've run across and I haven't seen one fail unless it was exposed to moisture or some other foreign influence. And that being said, I'm going to go over making up a cheap tool for an unwrapper just to be able to handle wires coming off a board. There are some tools on the market. One of them is a it's an OK Industries wrapper, combination wrapper and unwrapper for 22 and 24 gauge. The thing about this particular one is the unwrapping end has a it does have a kind of like a corkscrew threaded fashion hook on the end of it to grab a wire and remove it. But the problem with this particular unwrapper is when you go to grab the wire that it tends to spread the top of the connection, the whole, the whole connection out to the point where it, it loosens it up a lot. And if you can handle these connections in a way where, where they are not loosened up too much, you can pretty well just slide them back onto a pin. If you desire, you can put a small tank of sat around if you don't have to go nuts, and that will be an adequate connection going forward to get the equipment back into service properly. What I've discovered is that some some regular brass hobby tubing, I have two different diameters here. I'm, I'm, sliding, I'm sliding one within, within the other. The smaller one is going to be, well, let me zero. Whoops. Okay. The smaller tube is going to be a about a 2.4, 2.5 outside diameter. The larger tube is going to be like a three millimeter. This is probably like consider a two and a half millimeter, three millimeter as far as ordering hobby tubing online. What you can do is make up a tool fairly quickly that will enable you to remove these connections, the wire wrap connections, and not let them expand too much so you can almost reuse them intact just by sliding them back on. I'm choosing to have to remove these two wires just to get some more flexibility for repositioning this board for removing components. Got a couple of short ones here. I got 42 is my red and what's my number on the other one? I don't know because the resistor's in the way, but anyways, 
Now these are spiraled on in a if you look at them, they're spiraled on in a clockwise direction, so that means to remove them you're going to need a tool that grabs them in a counterclockwise direction, such as this one. This actually this tip will kind of rotate in a counterclockwise direction when it grabs it. But it gets in there and it just loosens up that wire. Some of the better unwrapping tools on the market have a function where it captures the spool of wire and there's there's ways to reuse it but usually not involving solder but in this case somebody might just be able to want to solder it back on. But what I'm going to do is since I have I have something where this inner diameter tubing will slide over the pin a little close up It'll slide over the top of the pin, but not over the wire. The two and a half, and then the three will slide over the whole wire wrap connection. So I'm going to take this one, slide it in here, and realizing that this tool will have to spin counterclockwise in order to grab the end of that wire wrap, I'm going to put just take a pair of wire cutters, put a small vertical notch in the end of the tube, and then I'm going to put an angular notch going up to that in that direction. So what that does is it leaves a little notch that will grab the end of that wire, loosen it up but still retain the shape of that wire coil. So we're going to we're going to give this a try. Well, it needs to be. There we go. Since I played with it, it gave it a little bit of restriction there. So we have that. I'm going to give this a little turn, and it's best to loosen this up to the point where you'll see the wire that the connection is on move a little bit. As soon as you see the wire move like that, it should be loose enough to pull off, but we're going to try it a little more. And there we go. The wire pulled right off. I can push this out. And if you can see, the coil is in a fairly, fairly intact shape, and you can slide this right back onto the connection. So 42 is my red. I'm going to mark that with a little flag right now so I don't forget it. I'm going to take it that the other one's 43. But this is the best way I can figure out to handle these pesky little wire wrap connections quickly making yourself a low budget tool I and mean, this, this hobby hobby metal for the two tube is probably will cost less than two dollars if you can source them from a hardware store so you gotta remember that you gotta put the pressure on the inside tubing and you can make this a lot shorter you can probably even make make a handheld tool out of it but the, the longer the longer end the inside one is the one that's going to have the pressure and a rotational torque on it. So I've got that over the over the wire wrap bundle again. I'm going to spin it until I feel it grab and you can see the wire came loose and it comes right up and I'll just push it right out the end of the connector. So there's a quick way, quick way to make a quick tool that won't break your budget and probably come in very handy and, and the nice thing about this if the one end wears out you can always trim from 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 use you can always trim the end off and create a new one and I don't know if I if you saw in our, another video I created an easy way to easy and quick way to trim brass tubing as well. I just take a nail that will fit close to the inside of the diameter. I tried using a pipe cutter and I really couldn't get a pipe cutter small enough. Saw creates uh, all sorts of issues and 
and things, and I was making uh, connectors to uh, join leads on capacitors before, and I just make sure the nail's inserted to the point where it's a backer for a pair of cutters that has good cutting blade on it, and I, I'll spin it slowly and crimp with it as I go, and then as you can see I've got a good notch in that tube, and sometimes you can take and snap it, or sometimes you cut all the way through, but this is how I was also making small connectors to crimp crimp two wires together, together in order to solder them. So, if your end for your piece wears out here, you can always just cut a new end and make a new one. And that's a little little tip that I created, and I hope it comes in useful for people and helps us enjoy our hobby and makes things a little faster to work on and restore equipment. And thank you for viewing in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you like more, to view more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you. And cutting away for a minute, I decided to kind of downsize and improve a tool a little bit in this kind. You don't need those two full length pieces of brass tubing, so I ended up cutting them down to length more wrapped some regular vinyl tape on the inside of or on the outside of the inner shaft and then put a couple layers of heat tripping in there to give it some grip and some color and then I also put some yellow heat shrink on the outer tubing I mean the worst thing that can happen out of this is you over time if this gets a couple times to the point where it might get kind of short on you and you'll have to remake another one but like I said, it's not a high cost tool and this this will be just as functional and a little less wieldy to handle. All you have to really do is let the larger diameter tool settle over a wire wrap fitting like so and then all your torque is going to be on the interior one here. So I'm not going, I'm not going to remove this particular wire. That can, that can stay in place for what I'm working on. But that's, uh, like I said, just the way to make a nice little cost tool, it won't, won't break the budget. And whatever scrap left over that brass tubing might come in handy for something. I know I'll, I know I'll be using mine. This content is available on YouTube and Odyssey.com. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hope you return soon.